Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. Wish you a very happy and healthy start to your cryptocurrency Monday week. As always, want to be wishing you the best, want to be wishing you the happiest of the happiest. But let's get into the live scene right now as Bitcoin has been doing, well, <laughs> very little since we last spoke. But it is the beginning of a new week, so with new weeks become new opportunities. And as you can see, we actually did break the red 10 simple moon average, which Bitcoin has been riding up ever since uh, late March. Sorry, middle middle of March uh, with yesterday's daily total close. That will be now likely resisting price action right around that 3980-ish area. And Bitcoin lose, looking like it is kind of losing a little bit of its steam uh, on that upwards crawl, crawl. Of course, we did see the lower time frames technically break down, but we haven't seen really the fall through that it would be looking for on a major formation like this. As this whole consolidation right here is coming to fruition as you, we do see the volume signature on this get extremely, extremely low. And I would imagine that the next move probably does actually break this one way or the other. Now, of course, when I do bring up my drawing tools right now, you do see that the lower time frames have actually, uh, sorry, let's actually go to a lower time frame first. So I'm actually a little bit, uh, <laughs> my, my, my speech is probably gonna be all fucked up because I've been actually spending the last uh, like four or five hours trying to put together the computer and it's very difficult. So <laughs> I'm just thinking about that right now. Anyways, uh, with the four hour right here, you do see that this rising wedge that Bitcoin had been living in for the past couple of weeks actually did technically break onto the downside. But this is not the reaction that I'd be looking for if, uh, you know, if I am uh, charting it like this. I'd want to see more fall through uh, faster, actually. More X's now. And basically, uh, 3940 is proving to be the support trend line, actually, and that is what I'd have a lot more faith in. Yes, you know, you can look at this formation as still a, a you know, a rising wedge that broke out of the downside, which, you know, typically, you know, is, is the more statistically likely thing to happen, uh, which would have a measured move pointing all the way down to uh, low 3800, um, actually about 3800 even. Uh, and technically, it's still, you know, still very much valid as long as we are living below the breakout trend line, which is right around uh, 30, let, let's just call it 4000, although it's actually a few ticks lower. I'm just not seeing that that uh, that flushing behavior that I that I expect to see um, when I do see you know one of these formations break. If it's going to actually be legit, typically these things happen um, relatively quickly. I mean, we spent about a day outside of it now, so that is becoming less and less likely. We also do have our medium and low time frame Stokes uh, starting to head back up. This is your four-hour Stokes right here, crossed and over to the upside. Two-hour Stokes are going to be getting quite high actually, and if we go to our medium time frames like an eight-hour, ten-hour, they're actually still down. Um, but getting a little bit more, looking looking a little bit more tired to me. Uh, Twelve hour daily should be down as well, so I really don't like trading against those. Uh, don't get me wrong, but I want to see everything typically line up. Uh, those are when usually the nice trades out of a nice formation actually, you know, hit. And we do see not only that uh, that this horizontal right around thirty nine. What do we want? What do we want to call it? Thirty nine twenty, thirty nine thirty, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Basically, where the yellow twenty one exponential is coming in on the daily. Uh, that is the more preliminary support to me. And the more important one, as you've seen, all these wicks come down into this area. We have one, two, three, uh, and then yesterday marks four right around this area. Also, sorry, the 89 exponential and the 21 exponential kind of just rounding off this blue box territory that we put in the charts yesterday. Um, so that is the support until it's not. Of course, if Bitcoin does break that area, then yes, I would be looking for that move down to uh, low 3800. Probably, you know, you can also see that the 50 exponential is actually starting to, you know, wrap around that area as well, meeting up with this trend line, which has actually caught our last one, two bottoms on this uptrend. Sorry, three right over here on the spike low. So I do like this overall for a setup, but waiting for confirmation is pain in the ass actually so that's what it really comes down to i'm just playing options right now as i will be until we actually break the range one way or the other if we break back above 4,000, this all goes out the window and i'd be looking for another move probably back to the prior high um somewhere either around uh, 46 becomes extremely likely uh, but uh but really around this area right here 41 10 to 41 50 ish area um is where i'd be looking towards but for right now uh i would say that there is more pressure down and, and like i said with all the higher time frames kind of agreeing with each other i would you know i, I don't like going against that um, I mean, also just don't like taking longs in an overall downwards uh, trend. Um, but like I said, patience is going to be the key right now as uh, we have been just struggling along this area for, I mean, over a week now. So what, we get one move a week, so a mm, few more days and then maybe might get a move. You never know. Uh, <laughs> but that's at least that's the way that it seems. Um Anyways, uh, while we're here on the higher time frames, I do want to I do want to do a little bit more of a dissection. This is the daily, right? Yes, indeed it is. Okay, take off the drawing tools. Let's go look at the daily RSI. RSI is now trending below the exponential. I do like that after getting rejected from getting the bullish control zone. I do like that again, you know, for more confluence. But 
in general, more neutral than anything. Uh, Daily Stokes would be down in an overall consolidation. I would be looking for that to actually be a major marker. Uh, Two-day Stokes, or sorry, two-day um, two RSI looks uh, significantly more neutral significantly more neutral uh, in fact the two-day also is not really giving up too much it's really the it's really the moving averages that i have my eyes on you can see right here that the 50 exponential is coming in right around that critical 4,000 area and we got the 10 sim simple which bitcoin has been writing up right around that 39 30 39 20 ish area the blue box territory that we just uh, looked at um and then the whole then the formation as a whole is rounded out by this yellow 21 exponential on the downside as, it, as they both converge on each other the yellow 21 and the green 50 and as this uh, as this pattern becomes more and more mature well we should get insight with between these two moving averages which one kind of you know comes at each other more aggressively is typically the is typically going to be the winner um anyways uh if we actually do take out the 50 exponential to the upside like i said mm, i mean that would be that same 4000 area i'd be looking for another move to 4150 4200 it very 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 likely if that would happen but for right now it's more important to say that this 50 exponential moving average has been harassing bitcoin for for well over a year now each and every time that bitcoin's gotten above it that's kind of called the last of the rally um, I mean, well, obviously this one's staring us right in the face right here. Uh, Bitcoin gets above for just one day, and then next day, just massive girthy red dollars shoved down those uh, bullish throats. Um, but the time before that, actually spent a little bit of time above, uh, even open and closed a, uh, a two-day total above right here in September of 2018 on the run to 7,400, and then rejected on the next day all the way down to the downside of the range. Time before that was right over here on the bull trap to 8400 in July, uh, July um, and uh, in early August, and uh, broke back down below the 50 right here, and then straight on down to the low side of the range. The time before that was on the bull trap to 10,000, and broke back down below the 50 exponential on that very last little bit of the rally, and then straight on down to the downside of the range. And then the time before that was this one right over here where we had the double top at 12,000. So it has been pretty damn good for the past year. Although I would say that uh, this last one, this last rejection that we saw from it did not lead towards move to the downside of the range. I'd consider the downside of the range uh, around 34, 50, 3,500 now. Basically, if, if I put back on the drawing tools where this, oh, I guess I don't have been drawn in. Oh, that's right. All I, I deleted all of my uh, drawings, but basically I want to draw this guy in here basically governing our current lows and that's essentially what i'd be referencing right now yeah so that'd be coming in somewhere yeah so, uh, somewhere at the current trajectory around 3550 actually which will be meeting up uh, soon enough with the 200 simple uh, if bitcoin just you know spends more time going sideways in this area as it's rapidly rising relatively speaking um anyway so Yes, that's what I'd be looking for uh, with regards to that. Um, if we do go back on to the three day, I think that we did just close another three day or did we? No, we did not. It closes. Does it close tonight? Yes, it does close tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And what do we have here? We do have three day stokes. And this is what I'm very interested in because three day stokes are actually going to be meeting up with a trend line very, very soon. In fact, I mean, you could also even consider this met as of the current moment in time this trend line going all the way back to december uh 2017 when bitcoin was at 20,000 moon boobs time although not not moon boobs at that time unfortunately uh so we did so you know this trend line has gotten all of the highs from 20,000 december of 2017 the may high at 10,000 in 2018 the august high at 8400 in uh, in well in august um again all those same sorts of areas that after that you know led on to a massive trap uh bitcoin coming in once again and as you can see the stokes are losing a little bit of momentum here not looking too erect, not looking too powerful. So uh, I, I, I am kind of looking at that as an initial signal that it is going to likely be respected. Um, but, you know, all this is mental masturbation. Uh, like I said, the it's price action first right now, at least for me. Again, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But uh, if Bitcoin breaks 39.30 to the downside, then I start looking for that move to 3,800. Um, I would be leaning to the downside here just because we broke this formation of the downside. So, you know, it's just it's crawling along. Um, but with the amount of wicks that we've had in this, you know, in this blue box, uh, it, 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 it seems very obvious, obvious to me that, uh, that is, that is the more obvious, that is the more important support rather than this formation right here, which I think a lot of people are looking at, um, which probably is why, you know, why it's kind of struggling right now. Um, and of course to the upside 4,000, as long as Bitcoin's below 4,000, I treat it as pressured onto the downside as yes, we did break this bearish formation to the downside. Technically speaking, we have all of our higher time frame oscillators suggesting down as well. Um, but if Bitcoin does break above 4,000, uh, I would switch around. Um, uh, immediately looking for another run to the top side of this resistance. And I mean, really at this, you know, 
to be quite honest, in my opinion, whether whether we hit this area, this area, or, or, or this area, it's all the same to me. 4,100-ish, basically the 200 exponential on the weekly, which as of the current moment in time, and more importantly, I do consider last week a rejection from. By the way, we have closed our fifth weekly dildo green in a row for the first time since May 2018 on this bull trap. Uh, obviously, the times before that were in the actual you know bull market. As I check on my other screen, just making sure. Oh, by the way, the reason why I'm actually putting this new computer together is so I can actually trade Forex while doing these streams as well because that would be way more fucking fun. Right now, it's just destroying my CPU. Um, so <laughs> need need to get that figured out. But have to actually figure out how to put it together first. Anyways, um, yeah, so again, not something that I pay too much attention to, but just kind of like a, a weird fun fact uh, with, a five, with a five weekly green, uh, green dildos in a row. Um, so far, though, I do consider actually last week a rejection of the 200 exponential. And uh, and again, just kind of showing that that's coming in right around that 4,100-ish area. So, you know, anything around that range is danger zone to me. And, and I actually would be looking to put on position there um, just because this has been the major resistance for the past uh, four or five months ever since late. Sorry. Uh, yeah, late November, uh, getting one, two, three, four, potentially five, maybe working on a six high um, in that range. I mean, from a medium to high time frame perspective, the, the, the game has been this simple. You know, it's been this simple, but excruciatingly uh, slow. Um, but uh, but sell the 200 exponential, buy the 200 simple, the pink and the purple. Whichever one breaks first, um, that's going to be our new our new like you know macro direction. If we do break above the, if we do both open and close weekly total above the purple 200 exponential to the upside, I would be looking for a more extended run into the 4000s. 4500 becomes extremely likely, and then personally speaking, probably would be looking at 47, um, 48. Just go formally test the daily 200 simple 200 exponentials. We haven't done that in ages um if we break the 200 symbol to the downside this pink move average right here which again is uh 34 50 ish area i'd be looking for a move down all the way to actually uh mid to low 2000s if that were to happen let me just make sure that my other screen's okay safe and safu there we go okay good god great all right <clears throat> awesome um hmm let me just make sure my other screen's safe over here okay that's looking all right okay not bad and one more mm. yeah i'll take it Alrighty. um okay cool so 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 yeah we talked about the we uh, we talked about the macro time frame so of course you know as long as bitcoin is both opening and closing weekly deals below the 200 exponential to the um uh, sorry, as, as as long as Bitcoin is both opening and closing weekly dollars below the 200 exponential, you know, I'm not really considering that the bear market, that the bearish trend is, is is actually over. I mean, technically, from a trader's perspective and from my trader's perspective, you know, my and separating my opinion from from trading, uh, actually, I would be more neutral in this area. I'd be neither bullish nor bearish until Bitcoin breaks the range one way or the other. And again, breaking the range, meaning the 200 exponential to the upside or the 200 simple to the downside. Um, as this has just been one massive consolidation as verified by the price structure and the volume signature, which I would which I would argue is more corrective um, in nature. So which which would imply more downwards resolution. I mean, just having a massive uh, down like this and then consolidating, um, you know, kind of in a triangular formation more often than not will lead on to a more, to another break to the downside. But of course, like I said, you know, if we break, uh, if, you know, if we both open and close a weekly total uh, above the 200 exponential to the upside, no real reason to be. I mean, no real reason to be bearish anytime soon, at least as far as I'm concerned. I need to actually. Oh, man, I missed it. Oh, I missed it. You bastard. Oh, man. Oh, well. All right. Well, fair enough. That's enough for that for today. Okay, cool. Uh, full focus on this now. Alrighty. Um, let's see. So let's go back down to BitMexico and let's go back down to the lower time frames and see if there's any if if, if there's any more um, indications in here. What do we have to look at? Uh, we do see hourly Stokes starting to get a little bit tired, wanting to turn. We do see hourly RSI uh, definitely in a more bearish posturing, just kind of also in between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone, uh, wrangled back down below the exponential once again. You know, like I said, all all time frames do say pressure down. Uh, it's just I don't like the sideways action for too long. It's um. It usually, it's just you want to see conviction in the market, you know, when you're taking a directional trade. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of people are calling this some sort of a head and shoulders. It's not. It's not a head and shoulders. The volume signature would be wrong. The shape also doesn't necessarily look right. Um, but I'd suppose that their their measurement would be down around here, right around uh, 3890. 
Uh, more importantly, let's go check out CME's. What is CME doing? Yeah, so CME uh, opened the day literally right where it closed on Friday. So we don't, you know, not really any sort of play that I, um, uh, 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 that I see obvious to take off of the open. Um, I consider this gap already filled with that drop down on the 21st. Uh, so now, if we were to head back down below 3,900, more importantly, I would be I would be bearish. Um, you know, instantly, uh, if we'd actually break it on CMEs, um, that would be the more important thing to me. Of course, putting on the drawing tools, you can see that that would also correlate with a breakage of this formation, the formation that the CMEs have been working on for, uh, for what, four or five months, in, or sorry, about four months since late November, getting one, two, three, four, five highs, broke out on extremely low volume, which is very indicative of trappy trap behavior, similar to what we saw over here in 2018. Uh, look at the volume on the actual breakout of this trend line when everyone was calling for 14,000, not so good. And it was, we, if we would actually break down back down below here, it would not only be just be breaking the structure, which would look like a hunt, but we'd also be breaking back down below the 21 exponential, which we do technically have a nice cross, a, a nice bullish cross the upside with the 21 trending above the 50, the green, the, the, the yellow and the green. The last time that we've even saw that on, uh, on CMEs, the only time that we've even seen this on CMEs was right here on the bull trap, literally right before the dooms drop, um, down from 84 to 600 or sorry, 6,000. Um, so again, you know, am I, you know, am I suggesting that that same exact sort of situation is going to, you know, arise? No, I'm not. Uh, but if, if, if we were to break back down below this area, I would consider this an overall hunt outside of this resistance. And then that would likely have carry on over to the bottom side of the range. Typically speaking, you get a very violent move, uh, relatively fast. And that would be also kind of fulfilling another test of the 618 Fibonacci retracement and also this rising trend line that's been governing the lows ever since, uh, December of the past year. Uh, while we're on here, let's go check out the daily stokes. Daily, daily stokes are going to be crossing down. Uh, you know, again, I do see, I do think that there is pressure down here. Daily RSI does have some bearish divergence, a very slight amount, but it is there. It is present. And we could also draw this out as a massive rising wedge as well. Uh, again, rising wedges, I fucking hate them. I am not a fan, but <clears throat> they typically do break onto the downside and an overall downtrend. I would be more trustful of a bearish formation in a bearish, uh, in a bearish market, just like it'd be more trustful of a bullish formation in a bullish market. But, uh, but right now, you know, the same, you know, this, the, the, the same criteria essentially applies. If we break this 3,900 support, very, 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 very likely that at the very least we head debt back down to about 3,650. And then I'd be looking for that move down to uh, 3,500, 3,550 also fill a test of the 200 simple on the weekly. Speaking of, let's see what the, let's see what the weekly looks like on uh, on CMEs right now. Not actually giving us too much. In fact, the CMEs we don't necessarily have a higher high either. Um, yeah, not really making too much out of it. Uh, RSI on the CMEs is actually a little bit more interesting, as you can see that uh, we do have a very obvious resistance area coming in right around here, right around the 40 marker. Although weekly RSI for CMEs probably not too accurate. It probably doesn't have enough data to really uh, extrapolate just yet. But we do see a little bit forming right there, which is also uh, respected on spot markets as well, which, which which we can go over here to Bitstamp for. And there you go. You know, this this support trend line being formed from the August to November consolidation uh, right above 6,000 before breaking down. And we kind of just came up and I would consider this actually a test of that as well. We just know that there is major resistance coming around this area, which is also happens to be right at the edge of the bearish control zone, which <clears throat> you'd imagine. So um, anyways, let me actually get rid of this alert before it goes on and scares the shit out of me because... I'm not going to take that trade, man. Oh, well. Um, so, yeah, and more importantly about the RSI on the weekly, I really don't like the way that it's situated right now. The way that it's kind of floating up with price action, essentially flat. And what I mean by essentially flat is it has we haven't broken any major supports or major resistances. So RSI is kind of floating up, getting to the edge of the bearish control zone, which to me is kind of like resetting the RSI and getting also towards that major resistance, which again correlates with the edge of the bearish control zone, which typically gets defended to begin with in the first place. So when thinking about all that and at a major resistance, this 200 exponential, which has been stopping all the highs since, well, since November, essentially, we've been just caught, but caught, caught down below it. Also, looking at the twenty, looking at the fifty exponential on the two-day delta time frame, looking at the higher time frame oscillators, I would say that I certainly would be more bearish here. Um, if I had to pick direction, I'm going to pick down in an overall bearish market. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a fucking bear in a bear market. No shit. Um, 
It doesn't mean it always breaks down, though. I mean, that would, it'd, just be a, it'd just be a straight down market if that would happen. That, you know, it just doesn't happen like that. Just like you don't have a straight up market, except in 2017, <laughs> in late 2017. Um, you know, typically speaking, it's not, it doesn't go straight down either. Uh, let's see, 12 hour, um, 12 hour 200 exponential still harassing price action, right around 4,000, 39.92 to be exact. Uh, 12 hour RSI, trending bearish, but not, not, not anything too crazy. Again, all of this is second nature to the price action. But hey, we can put together cases. I do want to go check out GBDC as well, which GBDC had an absolutely god awful close on uh, on last Friday. It will be opening up for the trading week. Um, to, or sorry, today, later today at uh, well, f uh, three thirty my time. Sorry, four, uh, yeah, three thirty my time. Anyways, more importantly, last week ended at, had an atrocious close. I mean, this is just awful. Uh, major rejection off the yellow twenty one exponential on the weekly, as you can see, closing with a massive wick to the downside. You could call this shooting star. You know, what do you want to call it? A gravestone dildo, a, a doji dildo, whatever the fuck you want to call it, a bodyless dildo coming off of a major rejection with a long shadow to the upside. Typically indicative of a lot of selling, a lot of perhaps even a rejection, you might say, and uh, also and also kind of rejecting it from getting a you know a higher high essentially closing on a higher high, I should say. Uh, also, we do have weekly stokes on GBC getting really high. We haven't seen them this high in a very long time. They're right at the edge of the bullish control zone, uh, seeming to, wanting to get in. But with a rejection like that, I'm going to imagine that this is likely going to be defended as we see on spot charts as well. We see the same sort of signature on the RSI. The RSI has been so fucking bearish on this thing for so long on a weekly dildo time frame. It's just, it is scary. Um, floating up all the way and again we haven't broken any major resistances i need to, i want to see the i want to see the 21 exponential broken and we are almost at the edge of the control zone already uh not the best setup let's go down to a daily um daily is quite simple as well it actually looks quite similar to cmes which would make sense just because they both trade on more professional venues um this significantly less so this is otc bullshit don't get me wrong um but a major rejection of the 89 exponential uh what was it on like wednesday of last week then fall through uh kind of forming its own rising wedge as well right here measure would technically be pointing down to about four you know about almost four dollars even which would align with that 36 36 50 ish area on spot given the premium um we also do see daily stokes looking Looking a little bit tired. Uh, sorry, well, no, I, I wouldn't say that just yet. They are getting up there. Um, we will. We 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 should get uh, further conviction on that with today's open. It you know it, it it'll give us another tick. More importantly, we do have bearish divergence on the RSI, and I do not believe that that's played out just yet. I think that we just lost the exponential right here, and we're probably going to come down at the very least to the neutral zone, and that'd probably come with another test uh, of 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 this rising support trend line. So that's really the one to watch. If this area breaks 460-ish area, I'd be looking for that move down. Um, and again, this one has been leading spot charts for the past over year. So uh, it works until it doesn't. As the saying goes, uh, let's go check out shorts and longs. Shorts and longs. Um, again, not not really acting, not not really doing anything too crazy. I mean, we, yes, there is certainly, uh, there, there, there are certainly more longs. Uh, 24,000 open longs versus a little over 20,000 20, open shorts with um, how many of these guys hedge? About 3,000 hedge, so about 17 and a quarter open naked. Uh, not, cr I mean, it's not crazy, but it is actually the same setup that we had on the break before 6,000, like the exact, like pretty much the exact same setup, I believe now, um, where longs were right here. Yeah. This, this was your November, you know, mid middle of November. So yeah, they're right here. So you can see same, same setup right now. And shorts were quite literally right here, right at the top of this red box territory, which actually, you know, each and every time that the shorts have gotten down into this red box territory for the past year, those have lined up with the major massive dumps, all the same ones that we saw and looked at on the moving averages of Stokes and. Uh, in, in RSI from my other analyses, ease, if that makes sense. Um, but still, I mean, this was obviously not a dump coming out of this area. We actually kind of floated up. So, you know, can it spend some time here? Absolutely. Uh, but it does certainly offer up the chance for a change in that trend. Um, however, it does not be confirmed just yet. Need to see it actually, you know, fully confirm first and then can go ahead and say, okay, the market has shown something different and now it's time to consider new things. But for right now, still, uh, still not, still not that, uh, or that is not the case just yet. Um, let's see. Okay, what else do we want to talk about? Uh, let's go to go, let's go take a look at the uh, crypto fear and greed index. Let me just make sure that I'm actually recording. I am good. That's 
you want to be fucking recording if you're going to be speaking into a mic for too long. Um, we're taking out a 46 right now, so fear, just just right under the fear. Uh, last week in the in, in the week prior, we actually spent a significant amount of time in the greedy zone, and same sort of thing here. You know, each and every time that the crypto fear and greed index has gotten above the 50 market, those have been the major dumps of the past year. You know, you're you're the, the exact same areas: dump at 12,000 to 6,000, dump at 10,000 to 6,000, dump at uh, 84 to 6,000, dump at 74 to 6,000, dump at 6,000 to 3,000. And once again, we're in this range, so you know. It does tell me to be cautious uh, although people I mean are technically a little bit more on the fearful side right now we're coming you know it's it's it needs to be taken to context of where we're coming from which is right out of the um, out, uh, out of the more bull or greedy zone I suppose you could say or, bu or bullish you know uh, interpretation of it <clears throat> Anyways, um, back down onto the charts. What else do we want to look at? And uh, we looked at the weekly. We looked. We did not close a buy weekly today. Yeah. More importantly, now it's it's really going to come down to the monthly. Uh, where does this month close? Because we have what five days left until the end of the month. And oh my god, I forgot to fucking talk about it again. Uh, all my programs are on sale. I'll bring it up just really quick. All my programs are on sale with the code Year Twenty. Uh, for the rest of the month, which is like I just said, about five more days, um, and that is sorry, uh, where's where's the actual code? It's right there. Uh, year twenty, all capitals, Y E A R, uh, and then the number is two zero. And that goes for all the payment plans on all my programs, the Trade Like Professional program, which is the all-encompassing technical analysis program that also incorporates risk and position management, also understanding underlying market dynamics and access into the members Discord community, plus access to a couple of proprietary indicators. Uh, the Master Your Options program is like that, but with regards to just doing options, both of those programs, 35 hours plus long understand that those are designed for people who want to do this in a more serious manner it, you know typically as a living as again you're going to be in, you're going to be integrating into the you know members discord community so i want to make sure that it's the same sort of type of you know mindset right um, and then the jewel indicators is just quite literally access to the jewel uh, indicators um, of course take advantage of my free stuff beforehand before ever thinking of investing in those because for most people, that's going to get you 90% of the way that you want to be. Um, most people don't want to be a professional trader. Most people don't want to do this for a living. And that's completely fine. Um, you know, everyone has everyone has different perspectives. But for the people who do, then that's that's kind of designed for that, uh, you know, in, in that nature. Anyways, back on the charts right now. Because the monthly is ending, which, okay, I'm not playing any sort of silly sale thing right there. Okay, awesome, great. <laughs> not having my half, half my screen fucking covered right now. Um, we do see that this 50 exponential is getting damn close, and it's right around 3,900. That critical number that keeps on, you know, showing its rearing its ugly head amongst every different time frame. That is a critical area. Whether it's CMEs, whether it's GBT, GBTC equivalent, whether it's spot on all different time frames, suggesting that that is the pivot to be working off of right now. If Bitcoin can close its next monthly dildo above this green 50 exponential moving average, that would be enough, probably, for me to you know, bypass looking for the weekly to both open and close above the 200 exponential. And I'd probably be looking for an extended run into the 4,000s. And really, I mean, the more and more that I consider it, it actually is very possible that Bitcoin could pop back up and test the 21 if we were to close above the 50 uh, at the end of this month. Um, again, five days left to do it. Now, if Bitcoin closes below it, then I will interpret this all as consolidation as we looked at on the lower time frames, verified by the volume signature, verified by the price structure, which I think is probably, you know, if I was leaning towards something, I actually do think it's probably more likely. And because it's below a major exponential, which we broke for the first time, and we've been spending, you know, four months here now, essentially, or perhaps even five, if you want to consider it all the way back on over here. Um, I would be looking at these these moving averages right here, the ten, the the ten simple and the yellow twenty one exponential, as they approach each other, and if they do actually confirm across the downside, which they will have a chance to do such things on, uh, you know, on the next monthly tick. Uh, granted that we end basically anywhere below, you know, probably forty five hundred, I'd imagine. Uh, that to me would be indicative of intensifying the algorithmic and bot selling, which is gonna likely be the impetus for sending this consolidation right here to the downside, uh, kind of meeting with that next 2,500 to low 2000s area. Also the 89 exponential on the BLX index right here, which we can show plenty of confluences with this area, going back to Bitstamp, uh, putting on the drawing tools, You'll notice that I have that area marked out by this blue box territory between 2300 and 2600. Also, you know, you know, encapsulated by these two uh, historical horizontal trend lines coming in from July, June of 2017. Uh, very important ones, actually, uh, anchored by this massive volume being done. And also, we do see the 886 Benacci retracement being being, uh, being being thrown in right here, which is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014, 2015. And if you do notice, the volume profile will be showing some massive high value nodes being thrown down right around that mid 2000 uh, mid 2500 range as well. 
well. And more importantly, if we do lose 3,400, you know, it's likely going to be a quick shot, similar to what we saw when we lost 6,000 all the way down to high 3,000s. Um, in the context of that time frame, if we go back to the BLX, BLX index, you can also see on the weekly, we got the 377 right around that area as well. Um, so more importantly, you know, when it comes down to all that, as a trader, I will not take that trade until we actually break the 200 symbol to the downside. But seeing all of these higher time frames start to, you know, slowly but surely shift themselves around, uh, I would say that if you know if we do close below 3,900, uh, it will it it, yeah, it will likely provide the setup for that. Um, right now, Bitcoin, literally right here, I did close a nice Doji. I mean, this to me, <laughs> it look it it looks sketch, man. It looks sketch. Uh, where did our next uh, weekly tick actually go on the Stokes? Yeah, Stokes are actually getting pretty high. This is the highest that we've seen Stokes since uh, about a year. Sorry, um, well over a year ago, January of 2018. January of 2018 was the last time that we were actually uh, this high on the Stokes and that we were coming down from a pretty nasty area as well. Uh, more importantly to me, it looks like we broke out. Whoops, I guess we already have that in. Uh, can you make a measure move on Stokes? Mm. Some people suggest that you can. I would say that it's not really something that I put too much weight on. But we're like right, we we are right there. And let me just get rid of this as that is not, don't need that right now as well. Uh, let's make sure that that screen's all good in Safu. Good, it is. Okay, great. And uh, more importantly, you know, we're kind of like right in the neutral zone right now for the first time again in over a year. So I would, you know, I, I would, I would want to see some dissenting behavior from the other team now. Uh, if they are going to defend, I mean, the Stokes are in the neutral zone while Bitcoin, again, has not broken any major resistances. That's, you know, it's for a consult for for something that I look to to kind of denote consolidation um, direction, which I do. Again, it, look at this is all consolidation. It would, again, just kind of be resetting itself looking for that next move. Uh, anyways, uh, going back down to the lower time frames, um, let's go back down to the four hour. What's the four hour looking like? Yeah, I mean, you can see that we're governed by the 21 exponential right now. If you're trading like the super low time frames, I suppose you could, you know, you, you, you might want to be aware of that. Uh, we are certainly wrangled uh, on, on the RSI, but <sighs> I just don't like the fact that there's so many wicks in this area. You know, there's so many wicks in this area. I mean, the resistance is very obvious. Uh, 4,000 support, you know, very obvious. Right, uh, the more preliminary support, 30, 3930. Um, but if 3930 breaks, do I take a trade to the downside? No, I probably don't. I mean, I'm already kind of in a trade to the downside. I'm playing some options right now. Um, but what I do is I'd really want to see 3900 break on CMEs. That's what means a lot more to me. They just lie a lot less. And if we actually did break 3900 to the downside, that's where I start to feel a lot more comfortable with putting a position like that on. And oh my God, am I, ugh, man, I think I'm gonna miss another trade. Oh well, all right, the show must go on. Um, okay, cool, so we got that, we got that. I think we've talked enough about uh, enough about Mr. Bitcoin. Let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin, how's she doing? And of course, if you want the more long-term analysis, definitely go check out the, uh, definitely go check out the playlist titled long-term analysis as I just uploaded a video into it yesterday. Uh, Litecoin looking like she's losing her luster as well. Uh, again, called a top on this the other day, uh, came back out, ground ground out $61 about, and I'd say that we're probably getting ready for a move down here uh, to, to at the very least test about $57. Um, daily Stokes down, daily RSI it has major bearish divergence and trending below the exponential, now fully kicked out of the bullish control zone. Um, confirmed, it's been, it's been a very slow molasses-like move. Um, but I would be looking for that move back down as $57. Uh, here's the thing though. Yes, it is in an ascending broadening wedge, which is typically a bearish, uh, a bearishly resolved pattern. Yes, we did just get rejected by a major exponential moving average as well, the 377 on the daily. But to me, this is extremely important. The daily double golden cross is on the way. And, uh, it will happen in the next few days, um, sooner rather than later. The higher that uh, the uh, the higher that price action stays, but it's really going to depend on what the reaction is like from this uh, uh, from the test of the twenty one exponential. If the reaction is good, if it's bought back up, bought back above you know sixty to sixty one dollars relatively fast, I would interpret that as likely the uh, as likely the golden dildo uh, cross being played out, and I would probably not want to be short on um, Mrs. Litecoin. But for right now, you do see some weakness come in uh, as the cross is likely to occur, which can be interpreted as a setup but for me i need to see the actual cross be confirmed first and then i want to see the reaction and then i enter uh, some more cavalier people will enter you know on uh, at, at 57 dollars before they've actually crossed and i don't like that because a lot of the times what you'll see is and this is the reason why is because you'll see or sorry, major market movers know a lot of people are looking at this. The golden cross, the, 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 the death cross, everyone fucking knows them. They're very powerful. They work. 
but everyone fucking knows them. So, so a great play that major market movers will do a lot of the time is they'll create the illusion of it actually about to happen. And then at the very last second, they will just fucking market sell the thing down so hard that it either just barely, you know, it just barely averts it or it completely averts it. I mean, sometimes you even do see it cross the upside for a second, and then the attack is, you know, the uh, the the attack is so profound that it just gets gets broken back down. That's typically more of like a war situation, not necessarily a trap. You're like seeing an actual fucking war going down, uh, but a trap would, you know, would, would 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 occur before. Anyways, that's not that's not fucking important to know. The more important thing to know is like how to actually trade it, which. Of course, for me, I want to. I want to see it actually cross first. I want to see. I want to see it cross, and then the reaction, and then I'd. And then I'd be interested in entering. Although I don't, you know, I don't trade anything like Litecoin to begin with. Um, and this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Just kind of sharing what I do in these exact sort of same situations. Uh, I would not be bearish on Mrs. Litecoin until. So Miss, Mrs. Litecoin is the best argument for for the whole market maybe getting out of the more bearish uh, trend. Um, but still not there. She has still not confirmed, uh, confirmed, uh, confirmed upside, um, or bull market or anything like that. More importantly, Jesus Christ, man, go Forex, go. Oh man, I'm missing some serious action right now. Um, more importantly, sorry, what, uh, what was I speaking on? Yeah, more importantly, um, I wouldn't be, I would, I would be neither bearish nor bullish on Mrs. Litecoin right now as it stands. If Mrs. Litecoin breaks $52 to the downside, instantly very bearish uh, for at the very least to move down to $44, $44 probably $40, $40.50. Um, if Mrs. Litecoin has a good reaction off the Golden Cross, I'd start to lean a little bit more to the upside. And if she breaks $63.50, zero reason to be bearish anymore um, from my perspective uh, again you know everyone's gonna have their different perspectives um let's go down to lower time frames i'm gonna guess that they're signaling some weakness as well uh four hour four, i mean four hours not really looking too crazy uh four hour stokes are getting down there uh four hour rsi mm, more consolidation than anything really uh which is what we kind of get in this in this price signature as well but you might you know you you could interpret this as a little bit of distribution going on um you know, if, if you want to get super slick with it, you do something like this and you say that this is, you know, we're, we're trying to flag out right now. Now, is it, it you know, is this, is this going to be some sort of triangular consolidation? Uh, regardless, the way to play it is the same. If, 50, if 58 breaks, I'd be looking for, for a move down to 57 on the daily 21. Um, if uh, if 61 breaks the upside, you know, I'd probably, probably get a try formally to 63 and a half. But it, it looks to me like it wants to have some pressure down right now. Uh, let's go look at the 12 hour. I'm curious what that one says. Um, yeah, 12 hour, tw uh, 12 hour does have a little bit more pressure down right now. Although 12 hour stokes are up, funnily enough, a 12 hour jewel is certainly in a more bearish posturing. I'd like to actually see it pop back up and test this area and then reject from it. And that's probably, that'd probably be the trade to be. Um, so could be happening in the next few ticks perhaps, but the waiting game continues. Let's go check out Mr. Buterall. Mr. Buterall, again, the most bearish of the bunch, uh, fucking around with its critical trend line right here, right now, and looking like he want, looking, he's looking sick. He looks like he, he looks like he wants to jump off the fucking ledge. Uh, we do have daily uh, breaking the 21 yesterday, although that's not the critical air to be aware of. Um, it's really this 382, which is right around 136 and a half, which also does meet up beautifully with this 50 exponential right here. Uh, if that area does break up, you're looking for a full move down to about 126 and a half, 127 down to the point. 0.5 fib also this spike low right here in, in kind of your breakout of uh of middle of february as well uh trend line um overall mrs litecoin you know Sto daily stokes still healthily down uh daily daily jewel actually did give a sell yesterday um right here so not bad not a perfect sell not something that i probably I, I don't take the i don't take the signals in the middle there uh the be the best signal that mrs litecoin had recently was or sorry mr Buterall. um i guess it wasn't on the, it, it wasn't on the day it wasn't on the daily it must have been on the floor but it's somewhere right over here um daily rsi just trending below the exponential more neutral than anything you know if, if you had if you had to lean one way i guess i'd say to the downside but Really, man, I need to see price action here. Um, you know, indicators can say whatever the fuck they, they want, but your PL is marked off of uh, price, not where the Stokes or RSI are. Um, four hour, four hour does look like we've actually broken this trend line, perhaps retested it and rejected so far. You know, could be looking at an initial, uh, uh, an initial signal. But like I said, one one thirty six and a half. That's the area to be aware of, and it has been the area to be aware of. Uh, also, three eight two. Uh, if that were to happen, if we were to actually head back down to the 0.5, right around uh, 126.5, um, overall, that would be considered a retest of this rising trend line that's been governing the lows ever since uh, ever since December. So if that trend line got broken, then we have something new to consider as I would be really looking for a move probably back down into this range, right around 110 to 105. 
Um, and this, th this whole formation would take on a completely different meaning. This would look like a massive redistribution if that were to happen. Uh, by the same token, you know, what if, what if Mr. Buterell takes out 143 to the upside? As that is, it's more preliminary resistance. Uh, it, is, it, it, uh, it is not this lower level area right here. It is actually 145 and, or sorry, 134, 143 and a half. Um, so as long as he's below that, I would be looking at this with more bearish goggles. Uh, if 143 and a half is, break, is broken out to the upside, however, I would be looking for a quick move to about 152, maybe even 160. Um, not bad. Uh, let's go check out traditional markets really quick. Uh, traditional markets uh, closing the day on Friday on their lows, very bad on the 21 exponential. So we did get that move down to 279 as we were talking about. But more importantly, uh, does this have continuation now? As uh, so I really don't like trading against a golden cross like this, but we have we have a major we have a we have a incredibly bad close on Friday. We also have major bearish divergence on the daily RSI. Uh, daily Jewel, I believe, is about to give a sell as well. And we, and essentially, I mean, this just looks like a hunt above a major resistance. So if we see even just a little bit of continuation today, if we just take out the low of 279 and 14 cents, um, which we quite literally closed once and above the low uh, on Friday, um, I'd be looking for continuation probably back down to 175. Uh, 175 and a half, test the 200 simple. Um, and uh, and then kind of pick it up from there. Uh, I again, I don't like being bearish on something that does have a golden cross. But the way that this happened, and look at the volume to neutral on this as well on that last kind of uh, Friday girthy dildo, uh, red dildo, I should say. Uh, uh, outshadowing everything that we've done on this kind of like slow trudge up for the past uh, few months, or sorry, a couple months. Um, so is that is that indicative of a change in direction? Perhaps, uh, you know, I, I think it's probably worth a trade. Um, but 275, 275 needs to break before I get a little bit more excited about that trade actually having some more follow through. Uh, but hey, 279 to 275, not a bad, you know, not a bad do. Um, I wouldn't get overall structural bearish on something like spies until we break back down below about 265 on the, you know, uh, uh, right around the 0.5 fib uh, and, and also the daily 377. Um, overall, this I'll just be playing supporting resistance right now as uh, a couple of competing narratives going on where the daily stokes daily stokes are down as well. Fresh cross down. So, yeah, I, I, I do think that this has some more continuations down. Uh, the next area to be aware of is 275. Uh, let's go check out the other top shit coins. What are they doing? We got um, we got BNB BNB coin right over here, which the lead. I mean, this is this is the fucking darling of the market. Uh, hitting, <sighs> Jesus Christ, man. I think did I call this one wrong yesterday? So what did I call yesterday? I said we broke down out of here, came back down to this area. Yes, got that. We popped back up, and then oh, I was looking for weakness yesterday. That obviously did not happen. I was completely wrong about BNB. Um, or no, did we? Yeah, we had this week down. Yeah, okay, all right, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I would not. I was not looking for a reaction like this. Though I'll say that. Uh, put it that way. When I'm when I say it, we'll probably bounce here. I don't. I don't mean like. I I, I don't mean to say that this is going to happen every time. Um, our, we are kind of fucking around with this 17 and a quarter resistance right now. Uh, move does look strong. Volume on that last bind was pretty damn good. But this is our prior high, so a lot of people are going to be selling here just by the nature of it. Uh, daily stokes are. Looking a little bit tired um, and can very easily cross back up to the upside. Uh, daily RSI is not printing bearish divergence just yet. We need to we need to confirm a lower high. Uh, daily Jewel can be setting up for a sell signal, but it's going to take at least like five days, I would imagine. Um, but assuming that assuming that this uh, assuming that the light blue gets a chance to kind of like crawl on back upwards, we might actually see a perfect signal, like a legitimately super perfect signal set up on BNB in the following week. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, you know this this 17 and a quarter resistance. If that area is broken, where I'd be looking towards? I mean, at that point in time, I mean this 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 thing really can fly. Um, where's our next resistance? I mean, we got to go all the way back on over here to kind of get something to judge it off of. And uh, you can see that we do have a very obvious area right here at about 20, you know, almost 22 dollars or about 22 dollars. So yeah, BNB can really fly if it does take this area out, and uh, there are certainly a few things saying that it, it you know it does have some juice right now. Uh, let's go check out Zcash. What Zcash doing? Fifty-seven bucks, and again getting rejected from the resistance, still maintaining this descending triangle. Daily Stokes down, daily RSI looking weaker. Uh, certainly more bearish RSI. Uh, Bcash same or sorry not same thing actually did break out of the descending triangle and actually maintaining it higher and like we said yesterday probably going to give another test to 170 175 176 somewhere right around here um overall bcash actually looking better than zcash so who is the real one uh although do we see some bearish divergence here on the rsi we do we do see a little bit of bearish divergence so uh here's what i'd say if 161 is taken out to the downside i'd be looking for another move back down to about 150 149 ish area uh but for right now, mm, 
as 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 long as 161 is held, you know, do I consider this bearish divergence just yet? You know, I I, I wouldn't. If if 161 is broken to the downside though, then yes, I would be looking for that move. To, uh, I would be looking for that move to uh, 148, 149, 150. Um, but uh, but hey, it could very easily rally off this area as well. Uh, what are our daily stokes saying? Yeah, daily stokes are back up. What about Tron Cash? Uh, Tron Cash, I'm pretty much neutral on. But just playing our supporting resistance, we've gotten this one pretty damn well. Again, not saying that to be arrogant or anything like that. I, I know a lot of people have been training this one extremely well, phenomenally well, and that's that's what I want to encourage. Um, and of course, you know, you can just do this yourself. And this has been this has been a very simple and easy and uh, and pressure off way of trading. Buy the 200 simple, sell the 200 exponential. It's like the weekly on Bitcoin. Um, looking like it, it kind of has lost its rally though I, I do consider this last one a rejection um stokes not really telling us too much they are looking weaker they are looking more bearish daily rsi you know technically do we have some hidden bearish divergence we mm, we do yeah, technically uh, but I wouldn't be putting too much on it just, just because, just because the, the upside was rejected on the last take, I guess I would be looking for, uh, I, I would be looking for another test of the, of the downside right now, but this it's right in the middle of the range. I'm not, uh, I'm not interested in training something like that. Uh, Neo cash, what's Neo cash doing curling down as well, signaling weakness. I do think that is, it's gearing up for a test of it at the very least 890. If that area breaks, I'd we'll be looking for another move down to 830. Uh, EOS cash, I'd be looking for. Uh, yeah, looking weaker as well. 10 simple providing resistance right at 375. Um, support right at 360. If 360 breaks, I'll be looking for a move down to 345. Uh, ripple cash, ripple nipples. Oh my God. The nipple. Has he been freed? Has he been freed? I think he might be freed. I think he might be freed actually. Uh, daily Stokes down. Daily RSI, uh, heading to the bearish, uh, control territory for the first time in a while. Uh, in an overall descending triangle, uh, the, the the greater narrative. I really don't see too much holding it up from you know 29 cents. I mean, yeah, you'll probably have some support at these prior spike lows, but uh, to me, um, this looks like it wants to come down. Uh, we do have a break. Uh, the the volume is non-existent, so that is certainly a counterpoint to what I'm saying. Uh, could offer the potential for a trap, but it is a break. A break is a break. Uh, so yes, I would be looking for some more downside here. 29 cents, absolutely critical. If 29 cents is lost, uh, that's when Brad Garlic House starts knocking on doors. Um, Monero Cash, Monero Cash, uh, not safe from the world's antics as well. We said that it was likely coming down yesterday. I think, well, it barely fucking came down. It doesn't really count. Um, I'd still be looking for, at the very least, move back down to 52 and a quarter. That's where the most preliminary support is. Um, if that gives way, 51 and a quarter is where to be looking towards. Uh, overall, this one just kind of rounding out a massive consolidation triangle with uh, with just getting rejected from that 54 uh, and a quarter area right around the 89 exponential. Very similar to Bitcoin, actually. Uh, training oscillators do want down as well. Uh, RSI, training below the exponential, be uh, bearish divergence as well. Um, daily stokes. I mean, it's just going to fall whatever Bitcoin does. Let's go check out Stellar Cash. It's going to be the same shit. Yes, we we uh, we called a top on it yesterday, or sorry, not we didn't call a top on it yesterday. We called a top on it right here. And I mean, I don't play this one myself, but <clears throat> you know, if you took trades on this one, fucking nicely done. I mean, this this, this has been a very nice and easy trade, uh, easy to manage. As long as it's below ten point nine cents, I'd be bearish on it. Uh, look, you know, looking for it to actually come back down, perhaps even test all the way to nine and a half cents. Uh, Oscillator suggesting the same thing. Uh, Daily Stokes down. Daily RSI majorly down. Uh, I would be looking for a bounce relatively soon, though. Again, it's gonna it's gonna fall whatever Bitcoin does. You know, it's gonna fall. It's gonna do whatever Bitcoin does. <laughs> like that's that's the dubious part about looking at uh, at the altcoins, at the shitcoins. You know, they they uh, they typically just follow the majors. So Bitcoin, Buterol, and Mrs. Litecoin run the market, and uh, and then they just respond a little bit or react, I should say. Anyways, um, so I, I, I'll start to wrap up this video right now, as I do want to get back to building this computer. So the sooner I get it done, the sooner we can actually. Do some forex and resistance more preliminarily speaking it's actually declining at 39 uh, 39.90 ish area uh, as long as bitcoin's below there i would say that pressure is down i would be looking at this with more bearish goggles but like i said with the inability to really have that flush that i want to see when you see a pattern actually technically break um it's it it, it, it usually if you go sideways for this long, something new will just emerge from it is, is, is what typically happens. But that's why I pay attention to the horizontal support and resistance because those things are, typ are, are typically very, very solid and also do have great confluences with our fibs with our, and with our exponentials and all that good stuff. And that would be the 4,000 level. Uh, support right around 3930, you know, it, you know uh, in, in this blue box territory, if that breaks, I would be looking for that move down to, uh, to low 3,800. 
And then overall, that starts to destroy some structures. Then you got to start, start thinking about the monthly. And then you got to start thinking about the weekly looking as continuation. I mean, all that starts to come into, you know, in, you know, into the discussion. Um, so, yeah, that's what we'd be looking for right now. I think that's going to do it for now. I'll probably be back on later with some more live stream action. If we don't get any action, I might not just because I want to continue to put this computer together as, uh, well, might as well use the time wisely, right? Anyways, that's going to do it for today. Uh, I'll be back on perhaps later, perhaps Perhaps you might see each other again. If not, I'll be back on tomorrow and look forward to seeing you there and take care.